Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, Senior Science Fellow and Principal Atmospheric Scientist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. And in this video for Farm Credit Illinois, we're going to be talking about the spring we've had and the summer we hope for. So let's start off here. This first map just shows you what we've seen since we last talked. We had a massive severe weather outbreak that hit at the very end of the month of, of March. But this was a part of a major recovery effort of moisture, despite the fact that it came with a lot of severe weather. Problem was, is once that moisture started to come through and we really got some aggressive planting happening right after Easter, the atmosphere turned on its heels and went back cold for us. We finished the last 10 days of April and the first 10 days of May with very, very cold conditions, which meant a lot of our crops sat in the ground. And then one of the least skillful forecasts that many of us in atmospheric scientists have had as of late was this forecast for May. You just looked at temperatures for that time period at the end of April, beginning of May. This is what that time period from May the 10th through June the 6th looked like in terms of precipitation. We saw incredibly heavy rains run up the plains of the United States, but we saw very dry conditions go throughout the Mississippi Valley, the Great Basin, the Ohio Basin, and much of Illinois, even though there were some early May rains, went over quite dry. And this is depleted soil moisture in places, and this has caused a lot of headache and a lot of worry as we go forward in this season. So just looking at it from a few different perspectives, this is the last 30 days looking at percent of normal precipitation. Parts of the state of Illinois, some places, have actually gone almost 30 days without rainfall. That would be these darkest shades down and through here. It's been driest compared to normal, though, throughout the Great Lakes Basin into New England. Meanwhile, from Texas all the way to Montana, we have places in here that are between 600 and 1,200 percent of normal precipitation. Now you say, what happened? Well, the jet stream quit going across the country. It just stops right here and stops right there. And that's because the Bermuda High, which typically sits and spins here, went all the way to Spain. And because of that, we were left with very stagnant flow. Despite El Nino developing, despite better signals for good, a good season coming up, the Bermuda High retreated. And when it left, it left a major gap in the flow of the atmosphere, which has starved the region for moisture. So another way to look at that, this is going to be the 30-day time period ending on the 6th. This comes from the Illinois State Water Survey. And after those really heavy storms that just kept right here south of Springfield all the way down here toward and south of Effingham, this area right into here saw that heavy rain, most of the rest of the state went over drier. And if you look back the last 14 days, it's only been isolated storms kind of in this northeastern quadrant of Illinois that have really kind of revived some soil moisture in certain places. So this is the stress early in the season that was not well forecasted back at the end of winter or even early spring. And that just shows you what the atmosphere is capable of doing, all right? Now, I looked back at this because I was curious at how dry May was. And so I reconstructed back to 1895. And overall, for the month of May, we've actually had an uptick, about an inch of additional precipitation on average in May in the state of Illinois starting in 1970. But where is this particular year going to end up? Because the official stats that are going to go in for May is that it was 107 driest out of 131. So that puts us down here in this range. And we just start to worry about what this is going to mean to this upcoming forecast. Because we did get a little bit of heat. You look back over the last 15 days and you notice that we've had above average temperatures. That uh, time period here at the end of May, beginning of June did get hot. We saw temperatures getting into the 90s. And usually in the vegetative stages of corn, we don't care about that. But if there's no moisture in the ground to help it, we saw a lot of this corn rolling up. We saw some stress on our soybeans. So we sit here kind of on the precipice just waiting for the moisture to return. And as I was recording this, we did see one thing change. Most of the last 30 days has been really sunny. That's what this map shows. It's looking at sunlight getting to the ground. It was above average. But we had some clouds and some smoke that rolled through. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. This is in the morning on June 7th. Here's that terrible air quality that hit New England. That's all coming from those fires in Quebec. And remember, back in May, the fires were way over here in Alberta. But this is a frontal boundary slicing through the midsection of the country, and it delivered some rain. And I have stayed up all night, and I watched early this morning to see where that rain came through. Because I'm in Minneapolis right now, and I just wanted to see if home got a little bit of moisture. And I'm getting some reports of places picking up a few tenths of an inch of rain. The good news is, is that this is the beginning. We're going to continue to see better chances of precipitation coming into this area. But I want to tell you something. What's coming in right behind this is some very dry air. So to finish this week, before I get into the good news for the weekend, we might have dew point temperatures that are in part of Illinois will be below freezing. Now, it doesn't mean your temperatures are going to be below freezing. That tells you how dry this air is coming in here. There is a frost, by the way, in northern Wisconsin in the UP that's coming out of this. All right, this is what I want to get to. This is the new forecast for the next seven days. And as you can see, parts of Illinois 
getting over to the eastern Corn Belt, we have better chances of picking up at least a half inch of rain, some places even more than that. And what's going on right now is we're watching this guy right there. See this? So the flow is still weak. See how pathetic this flow is? In fact, we've been launching weather balloons out of Lincoln that haven't even found the jet stream. So they're just going straight up and coming back down. Well, this trough is going to sneak around this ridge and dive right into the Great Lakes. And it's going to sit here and spin. And the good news about that is it's going to add up some precip for us. So this is the frontal boundary that went through early this morning. You can see some of the precipitation amounts. That continues to push through southern Illinois, although the rainfall amounts are not that high. Now watch, this is going into Friday when all the dry air is there. Saturday morning, the dry air is still there. But the system begins to arrive Saturday night into Sunday. There it is. This is Sunday the 11th. And it could curl through Illinois, giving us a decent chance right there. See that? Of picking up anywhere between a half inch and an inch and a half of precipitation. The other very good news about this pattern is what it's doing to the temperatures. Now take a look. We're starting to see a retreat of the heat back to the Canadian prairie, back to the Pacific Northwest. And even though we don't pick up just drought busting rains, we are picking up some cooler conditions, which is going to lower the stress on the crop. Now, once we get out there past the middle of the month and start working toward the solstice, you start to see some heat coming back in. But the good news is how this heat is coming back in. Let me show what I'm talking about. This is the jet stream right now, very stagnant. But as we play forward, getting through the end of this week into the weekend, so this is the front that's coming through this weekend that we're looking forward to. There it is. Notice as we get out there to the 13th, 14th, and 15th, this is what I've been waiting on. Normally when you have an El Nino, the subtropical, this is the polar one here, there's the subtropical one there, it tends to be energized, tends to get going. And once we get out here past the middle of this month, we start to see it returning better flow to this area on a ridge that's going to set up over Texas, over New Mexico. And that brings in ridge riding storms, which we need to save the day. So as it stands right now, looking out there at week two, we now see the southern half of Illinois is currently in the above average potential, according to the CPC. Same thing here from the European model and same from the GFS, although the GFS is most generous on returning those rains. What about beyond that? If we look out there at the new week three, week four outlook, again, what's happened is the models and the CPC have retreated the driest conditions to the Great Lakes Basin and upper Midwest and start to return some moisture in through here, although it will come in in a little heat. What I'm waiting on is for the Bermuda High to come back and live in Bermuda. When that occurs and El Nino develops, we tend to just get great flow coming out of the Gulf and the right flow over the top of it to generate storms. That's where we currently sit. So if this is the end of June forecast from the CPC, let's go look at the same thing from another model, the CFSV2. The 21st through the 27th, it continues to show better chances of precip. You look out there, the 28th through July the 4th, again, better chances for precip. Where is it driest? Upper Midwest and Great Lakes. So you can see there's some consistency here. Final couple things to think about. El Nino, we talked about it for months. Is it still coming? Yes, and quite aggressively. But there's some competition. There's a lot of warm water in the North Pacific and a lot of warm water in the North Atlantic. And this North Atlantic warmth seems to be really influencing the Bermuda High. I've said that multiple times. I want it to be here. It was sitting here and now it's sitting here. Please come back because when it comes back, we can team up with the warming that's happening in the, you know, in the equatorial regions to start to deliver flow that just sneaks right here under this colder water and gets to us. This colder water right now is not a threat. I would be worried if it extended into the Gulf of Alaska, but it doesn't. We'll keep an eye on it, but that right now is not a major threat for us. So overall, what's going on with this, uh, with this El Nino? Most models, the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia being the most aggressive, want to take us up by the time we get into hurricane season into a very strong and possibly even crossing that Super Nino threshold. This thing is coming on fast and it's going to be a major influencer of summer and going forward beyond that. Now, if, now this is a big if, if El Nino takes control, then the Climate Prediction Center's forecast for June, July, and August will verify, especially in July and August, seeing above average rains with less heat risk. But as you saw at the beginning of this video, we know that sometimes these longer range predictions can't pick up on the sub-seasonal factors like the position of that Bermuda high. So there's big question marks on this forecast. The, the, the thing is, if El Nino has control, we will slow the damage to the crop that we've seen in May and beginning of June and start to do some repairing. And the good news is, is with Illinois soils and what we've got, 
we could really make up for some lost time here. I've got a lot of hope in this pattern, but I'm being very skeptical of where it's going. So you can follow along with me daily. I cover this stuff. Make sure you check it out. But also our partnership with Farm Credit is strong. I love working with their team and they're staying on top of this as well. So let's go through this season together and let's keep watching these weather patterns evolve. Thank you.